There's a boy in the girl's bathroom, chapter 30. Bradley remained in his seat after everyone else had gone out to recess. He walked to Mrs. Ebel's desk. She was sorting papers. M Mrs. Ebel, he said timidly, may I use the hall pass? I, I have to see the counselor. She looked up, please. Normally, Mrs. Ebel would never allow Bradley chalkers loose in the hallways. But something about the way he asked must have changed her mind. All right, Bradley, she said, then caught herself. But if you're bad, you'll never be allowed in the halls of the school again. Thank you. He took the hall pass off the hook behind her desk and headed out the door. You're welcome, Mrs. Ebel said to herself. She knocked, he knocked on the door to Carla's office. How nice to see you, Bradley, she greeted him. I appreciate your coming to see me. He shook her hand, then sat around the round table. She was wearing the shirt with the squiggles on it. It was the one she wore the first time he saw her. He liked it, but not as much as the one with the mice. I did my homework last night, he said. Carla beamed. I'm so proud of... I ripped it up. What? I ripped it up. I brought it to school, and I was just about to put it on Mrs. Ebel's desk, but then I ripped it up. Why did... Carla started to ask. Why did I rip it up? He asked her. I don't know. Why did you? He shrugged. She shrugged. They both giggled. I was afraid you'd be mad, Bradley said when he stopped giggling. Carla shook her head. You did your homework. That's the important thing. I'm very proud of you, Bradley Chalkers. I'm going to do all my homework from now on, he promised. That's wonderful. But what if I keep ripping it up, he asked. Why would you do that? I don't know. I didn't think I wanted to rip it up today. The main thing is that you did it, and you learned some things by doing it, didn't you? What of means, said Bradley. What of means, Carla repeated. Times, said Bradley. She stared at him baffled. Oh, right, she said, as it all connected for her. Okay, so even though you ripped up your homework, you still remember what you learned. You didn't rip up your memory. And when Mrs. Ebel gives the next arithmetic test, You'll know how to answer the questions. If they don't change the rules, said Bradley. What rules? Like, what if they decide to make of mean subtraction? They won't change the rules, Carla assured him, whoever they are. But what if I rip up my test too, he asked. Carla looked at him as if he was being silly. Has Mrs. Ebel given you any homework for tomorrow? Tomorrow's Saturday. Okay, for Monday? No, we never have homework over the weekend. He spoke like an expert, like he'd been doing homework for years. But we have a book report due next week. Only, only what? Only, I don't have a book, and Mrs. Wilcott won't let me check any out from the library. Well, let's see, said Carla. Do you think you might know somebody else who might let you borrow a book? Think hard now. Bradley looked around at all the books in her office. May I borrow one of yours? He asked. Please, I won't scribble on it. Carla walked around the table and picked out a book from a stack on top of her bookcases. It's my favorite, she said as she gave it to Bradley. He read the title and laughed. My Parents Didn't Steal an Elephant by Uriah C. Lasso. He opened a page one and read the first sentence, I hate tomato juice. He thought it was a funny sentence to start a book. He continued reading. Every morning, Aunt Ruth gives me a glass of tomato juice, and every morning I tell her I hate it. Fine dumpling, she calls it. She always says, don't drink it. She calls me dumpling. Uncle Boris calls me cornflake. They're crazy. One of these days, I'm afraid they're going to try to eat me. He glanced up at Carla and returned to his book. My parents are in jail. They got arrested for stealing an elephant from the circus. Only they didn't do it. If they stole an elephant, I'd know about it, wouldn't I? I mean... If your parents stole an elephant, don't you think you'd know about it? I think the elephant just ran away. Her master was always mean to her. He whipped her and made her do stupid tricks. My parents used to complain about that a lot. That's why everybody thinks they stole her. So anyway, that's why I live with my crazy Aunt Ruth and Uncle Boris. If you ask me, they belong in the circus. They're crazy. Uncle Boris always smokes a cigar. It just hangs out of the corner of his mouth. Whenever he kisses my aunt... He swings the cigar out of the way with his tongue and kisses her out of the side of his mouth. 
I bet you think Aunt Ruth doesn't like it when he kisses her that way. Wrong. She always laughs when he does it. Sometimes she smokes the cigar, too. I told you they were crazy. Look, he even smokes the cigar while he's drinking tomato juice. The bell rang. Bradley was amazed by how quickly the time had passed. Do you want to have lunch together again? He asked. I'm sorry. I'm having lunch with the president of the school board, said Carla. I'd much rather eat lunch with you. He didn't mind too much. At least he had her book to read. They shook hands. Then he walked back to class. He placed the hall pass back on the hook and took his seat. He knew he'd write a good book report because he had such a good book to read. I just hope I don't write it up. Rip it up. Okay, what would you call chapter 30? Chapter 31. What you do with Bradley? Asked Ronnie. He's reading, Bartholomew replied nastily. He says he doesn't want to be disturbed. He thinks he's too good for us now that he does his homework. Oh, be quiet and let him read if that's what he wants to do, said Ronnie. Thanks, Ronnie, said Bradley. I knew you'd understand. I knew you'd understand, mimicked Bartholomew. Ronnie understood. She knew about Carla. Bradley returned to his book. Uncle Boris and Aunt Ruth are married. I bet you thought you already knew that, except you're not as smart as you think you are. They were my aunt and uncle even before they got married. Uncle Boris is my mother's brother, and Aunt Ruth is my father's sister. They didn't even know each other until my parents got arrested for stealing the elephant. Then they both came here to take care of me. Ha! They fell in love and got married a week later. It was sickening. You're lucky you weren't here. I've been cheated out of an aunt and an uncle. If they had married somebody else, then I'd have two aunts and two uncles. Now, I only have one aunt and one uncle. I wonder what happened to the aunt and uncle I don't have. I wonder if they married each other too. Bradley looked up. He tried to make sense out of that last paragraph. It made him think. A lot of parts in the book made him think. That was one of the things he liked about it. It made him think about his father, too, about why the man who shot him wasn't in jail. There was a knock on the door. His mother entered holding a piece of paper. Oh, you're reading, she said. That's good. It's a good book, he replied. I just got this letter from the Concerned Parents Organization, she said. There's going to be some sort of meeting about Miss Davis, your counselor. Bradley's heart fluttered. It says if I have any complaints, I should come to the meeting. She shrugged her shoulders. I don't think I have any complaints. She seems to be helping you. Do you have any complaints? Oh, no, he doesn't have any complaints. Claudia laughed, coming in behind her mother. He's in love with her. I heard him say it to his animals. What? Bradley said in a high voice. Claudia snickered. Look, Mom, he's blushing. That proves he loves her. Bradley wished he could crawl under his bed and hide. It doesn't prove anything, said Mrs. Chalkers. Quit teasing your brother. Where'd you get the book, Bradley? Claudia asked, like she already knew the answer. His heart was beating very fast. Carla gave it to me. Carla gave it to him, Claudia repeated. Well, I don't care where he got the book, said Mrs. Chalkers. I'm just happy to see he's reading it. The only reason he's reading is because he's in love with his teacher, said Claudia. She's not my teacher. She's my counselor, said Bradley. Claudia roared with laughter. His mother laughed too, but she quickly covered her mouth. I didn't say I was in love with her, Bradley insisted. We were just talking about my counselor, not my teacher. That's all. Are you going to let him marry her, Mom? asked Claudia. Mrs. Chalker smiled. Well, I don't know. She seems like a very lovely girl. Bradley felt like he was going to die. His sister was hysterical. So you don't have any complaints about Miss Davis? His mother asked seriously, getting back to the letter. She's okay, he said without emotion. Claudia snickered. Well, then I won't go to the meeting, said his mother. Come on, let's leave your brother alone. The Concerned Parents Organization never likes anything, said Claudia. They're always causing trouble at my school, too. They want to turn kids into robots. Bradley watched his sister and mother walk out of his room and shut the door behind them. He lay down on his bed. His face was on fire. So? I love her. What's wrong with that? 
Nothing, said Ronnie. They just don't understand about love. The door opened again. Claudia stuck her face inside and said, If the Concerned Parents Organization ever found out Carla kissed you, she'd be fired for sure. What would you call chapter 31? Chapter 32. Bradley paid close attention as Mrs. Apple taught arithmetic. He nodded his head every time she said something that he already knew. Once he almost raised his hand to answer a question, but he lost his nerve. Somebody else gave the answer he would have given. I knew it, he thought as he nodded his head. He spent the recess in the library reading My Parents Didn't Steal an Elephant by Uriah C. Lasso. When he was leaving the library, Mrs. Wilcott stopped him and said, You were reading, weren't you? Yes. Good for you, Bradley. Good for you. He smiled now as he remembered it. It's because of Carla's book, he thought. The book was his lucky charm. As long as he had it with him, it seemed like nothing could go wrong. His black eye was all gone, too. When the bell rang for lunch, he put his arithmetic book away, took out his lucky book, and walked to Mrs. Ebel's desk. May I borrow the hall pass, hall pass, please, he asked. She let him have it. He knew she would. He was holding the magic book. He walked to Carla's office. Just as he was raising his fist to knock, she opened the door. Bradley, what a pleasant surprise. You want to have lunch together, he asked. Oh, I'm sorry, I can't. I have to go to the principal's office. What's the matter? Did you get in trouble, he, had, he joked. She didn't laugh at his joke. She shrugged her shoulders, then headed to the principal's office. Maybe she really did get in trouble, Bradley thought as he watched her go. It's probably because she doesn't believe in rules. She must have broken one without knowing it. I should have warned her, but he was too, wasn't too worried. He couldn't imagine anything bad ever happening to Carla. He walked through the auditorium and outside to the playground and ate. He sat on the steps outside the auditorium and ate his lunch. At least he had her book with him. That was almost as good as eating lunch with her. He didn't read while he ate. He was afraid he might accidentally spill food on the book, even if there were no such thing as accidents. Colleen Varigold walked by. Hello, Colleen, he called to her. She stopped and looked at him oddly, then walked away without returning his hello. Bradley didn't mind. He said hello to Colleen because he knew Colleen would appreciate it. He felt Carla was watching over him. And it didn't matter that Colleen didn't say hello back because in his heart, he heard Carla say, Hello, Bradley. It's a pleasure to see you today. He finished eating, then opened his book. Guess what they've done now? The wall, they wallpapered the garage. I told you they were crazy. Who ever heard of anybody wallpapering the walls of a garage? Purple paper with yellow polka dots. I don't even know how they got in there. The garage has been locked shut for months. The lock was broken or at least nobody could get in. At least I'm glad they finally got it open. It was beginning to smell really bad. You could smell it from the driveway. Now it just smells like paste. I can't wait until my parents get home and put an end to all this craziness. Their trial is next week. They have to be found innocent. I mean, if they stole an elephant, I'd know about it, wouldn't I? Where could you hide an elephant? Look, he's reading, said Robbie. I didn't know. He knew how to read, laughed Curtis. Bradley looked up. He was surrounded by Jeff and his gang. He can't read, said Brian. He just looks at the pictures. They all laugh. What you reading? asked Russell. Bradley closed the book and slowly stood on the concrete steps. Chicken chalkers, said Dan. Andy bounced a basketball. Bradley glanced behind him. Doug was blocking the door to the auditorium. What's the matter, Bradley? he asked. Hey, chalkers, what's the name of your book? asked Robbie. He looked at his book then stared defiantly at Robbie. Let me see it said Robbie. Bradley clutched it against his chest. No matter what, he wasn't going to let them harm Carla's book. Aw, oh, come on, Bradley. Be a pal, said Robbie. I just want to see it. Curtis chuckled. Robbie stepped up toward him. You can't read anyway, he said. Give it to me and I'll read it to you. He reached out and rested his hand on the book. Bradley jerked it away. Uh-oh, I think he's getting angry, said Brian. I just want to see it, said Robbie. Again, he reached for the book. 
Bradley held it under his right arm and raised his in, against his chest. He made his right hand into a fist. Robbie backed away. Jeff, he called. Come on, Jeff, teach him a lesson, said Dan. Jeff stepped between Andy and Russell. All right, said Curtis. Hold on, said Andy. Let him get off the steps. The boys backed down. Bradley, clutching his book, walked down the concrete steps to where Jeff was waiting. Do you want me to hold your book, Bradley, said Andy. Bradley glanced at him. Don't worry, he said sincerely. I won't hurt it. Bradley handed Andy the book, then looked back at Jeff. They stood on a patch of grass and dirt and faced each other. The bruise around Jeff's eye had turned brown with a greenish tint. Jeff raised his fists. The other boys formed a circle around him. Come on, get him, Jeff, urged Brian. Give him another black eye, urged Russell. Bradley readied himself. He raised his fists in the air, then lowered them. He had an idea. Hello, Jeff, he said. Robbie snickered. Jeff stared at him wide-eyed. Hello, Bradley, he replied. Bradley smiled. He held out his hand. Jeff smiled, too. It was his first honest smile in a long time. He shook his best friend's hand. The other boys were dumbfounded. No one said a word. Andy finally broke the ice. Do you like to play basketball, Bradley, he asked. Bradley looked at him bewildered. I'm not very good, he said. So? None of us are, said Jeff, patting him on the back. Now we'll have even teams, said Robbie. And that's the end of the chapter. What would you call it? And what do you think about how things just changed?